nuance of what was in the IRV charter amendment that the voters approved that this alters, in and the, what does this clarify for in us? In the charter amendment, it said you will rank candidates. I don't have the charter in front of me, but you will rank candidates up to the final two candidates. This one uh, is more specific on how you will do that, how you will accomplish that. So the candidate or candidates whose combined vote totals are less than the next lowest candidate after each round shall be eliminated and their votes redistributed. It's really giving you explicit information on how we will do that part of the process. Oh, thank you. And otherwise, we would have just assumed that that would have been how it's done. This this gets a little sharper point it's, on the pencil. It's a little sharper. It's a little I brighter line. And, and it basically is going to help us all understand how we're going to do that and, and deals with uh, multiple eliminations. Um, and we'll ensure that we will not, at the lower end, if you had 10 candidates running and the bottom four, their vote totals didn't equal the next highest candidate, then you could do some multiple eliminations. Um, and that's part of this. As and well. this will allow for multiple? Yes. But that wouldn't change the outcome. A multiple elimination or a single elimination, you still got to get back down to the top two or top one. So it just gives you Correct. some... It just gives Some us, better direction. It gives us guidelines on how we go about doing that. Good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. McCarthy, that's the first time I've heard that expression, multiple eliminations. I've well, heard of single eliminations as this process. Um, so if I heard you correct, if you had um, candidate number five or six and all the candidates below it down through ten, could come up to that level that they would all be eliminated in that round versus just the very bottom one eliminated each round? Correct. Okay. I just hadn't heard that explained before, and so that's, that's new information to me. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? Uh, just one, and I, 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 I think I know the answer, but I just want to make clear for the record. The reference to... 50% plus one in parentheses, about two-thirds of the way down. It's 50% plus one vote, not 50% plus one more percent. Okay. Because where you refer to, you say percent, and then you say one, you're assuming you're referring to one vote, not one more percent. Right. I just, just want to make sure on the record that's what we're talking about. Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against Council Amendment Number 1 on blue with the relatively technical language included, uh, please step forward and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Chairman Goings, members of the Council, uh, for the record, my name is Randy Boss. Uh, uh, while I appreciate the clarification in the language, it really doesn't have anything to do with Ordinance 2765S. 2765S was to extend the implementation date from July of 08 to July of 2010. This doesn't do anything with modifying the implementation date. It's not the language that uh, I'm objectionable to. It's the extension of the date from 08 until 10. That was the point, I think, of everyone's comments prior to the council was the voters approved the charter amendment to be implemented in 08, not in 10. The uh, county auditor has the capability and has expressed she has the capability to implement it by 2008. And I would request that, again, that 2007-65S be rejected. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, right now we're just on the amendment, not the underlying ordinance yet. We'll get there. Anyone on the blue amendment and the round conducting process amendment? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi. Richard Anderson calling from Tacoma. Uh, I, I just like to follow on Councilmember Bush's point about the multiple eliminations and, and where this would uh, come in. It's mostly going to be important, and also your point is correct. It's not going to change who wins the race. So, you know whether you. You go every single round if, you know, or whether you, you eliminate several. Mathematically, as long as the people you eliminate don't add up to the next one, it's not going to change the outcome. And I, this, I think, is largely uh, a computer algorithm. It might speed up the counting a little bit. And also, I think it's an issue of how you present the results. 
Uh, where I think it's going to be a bit more parsimonious, maybe more helpful, is if you had a bunch of writing candidates. You know, one writing candidate gets two votes, another gets three votes, and so forth. What you can do is you can eliminate, essentially, all of your write-ins in one round, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're on to the next round where the candidates may have a, a more sizable amount of votes. So instead of having to eliminate candidate with two votes and then with three votes and then, and then show all this, you just get it all done with once. It doesn't change the result, uh, who's going to win among the front runners. And so, uh, you know, this perhaps could have just been done behind the scenes and let the computer programmers do it. I guess there's no harm in putting it here. It would lead to the same result. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, your name for the record, please. Uh, David Schrodell, and I just had a brief, I guess, point of clarification with regard to the majority issue that you just brought up. I was looking at it, and um, based on my understanding of, of standard majority definitions, um, typically it's not 50% plus one, it's just a majority. Uh, case in point would be 101 votes. If I read this correctly, it would require 52 votes to win as opposed to 51 votes to win. Someone could just clarify that for me. That would be great. Thanks. Mr. Schrodell, thank you. Fun continues. Anyone uh, else on this amendment? Seeing it, I'll close public comment on the amendment. Ms. Long or Ms. McCarthy, who wants to take a stab at Mr. Schrodell's uh, scenario? Ms. McCarthy. I think the purpose of the parens was to really define what majority is. And I think that, I think it's pretty clear um, and, and I guess I'm not tracking what David is saying, but uh, that if a candidate receives a majority, which we're defining as, as 50% plus one vote uh, of the votes from the continuing ballot, that would indicate that person would be a winner. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bunny, and then Mr. Bush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it is possible for a candidate not to receive a 50% majority and still have more votes than everyone else at the end if you don't have a down ballot. Does this eliminate, if you don't have, say if there were, if you started with three candidates and, and nobody voted a second or a third and someone had 48 percent, does this eliminate that person's ability to win the race? It's of the, of the continuing. The process of eliminating the candidates and transferring their votes to the next ranked continuing candidate shall repeat, be repeated until a candidate receives a majority of the votes from the continuing ballots. So your number basically somewhat changes on what it's on the continuing ballots, not on that first. Do you see what I'm saying? The universe of votes changes, as Mr. Cox uses that term. The universe of votes changes. So under, under the scenario that would be that this isn't a 51% of all of the votes, it's a 51% of the continuing votes. Correct. You've got it. So you still may end up with a candidate prevailing in a race with less than a majority 51% of the entire vote pool. Which is what we have today. And that's what we will have for all the people on the traditional ballot, that those scenarios do indeed. That's what, well, is that what we'll have here, or is it 51% of all of the votes? Of the continuing votes, of the continuing ballots that will be de deemed elected, at the, of the continuing ballot. So you have to look at it from that universe of votes. This, was the, well, this is what we tried to do. Maybe, Mr. Cox, you can explain this. Yes. Cox. <laughs> uh, Councilman Bunny, um, the, uh, maybe it's good to describe what happened in San Francisco. There they, at least from an uh, analysis of the votes taken in 2004, of four council elections, there wasn't a single one that won by a majority of the total votes.